Hey there, plant enthusiasts, we're back at it again. My name is Brad and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about one of the most resilient houseplants there is, the ZZ plant. If you're looking for something that's easy to care for and won't break the bank, this plant is for you. Without further ado, let's go! <laughs> First thing that we should talk about is the right location for your ZZ plant. The ZZ plant can tolerate anything from very low light conditions all the way to direct sun. Want proof that this plant can handle direct sun? Well, this plant has been in direct sun for the past three months outside. That's right, this ZZ plant can handle direct sun. On the other hand, the ZZ plant can also handle low light conditions as well. Now, even though it can handle those low light conditions, it does not mean that it is well suited for it. A lot of times when people say that plants can be in low light, they will survive, but they will not thrive. If you want the best of your ZZ plant, it's best to place it in bright indirect light. That way you'll get the beautiful glossy green foliage of the leaves, and you'll also get bigger stalks coming out of your bulb. Next, let's talk about the watering requirements for the ZZ plant. The ZZ plant does not need to be watered that frequently. In fact, you can water it pretty infrequently. It's important not to overwater your ZZ plant. In fact, terracotta pots are actually the best pot option that you can have for your ZZ plant due to the porous nature of the terracotta and also the fact that terracotta helps to make sure that your soil doesn't retain too much moisture. Here's what a ZZ plant looks like outside of the pot. As you can see, there are these bulbous like structures that exist that are typically found underneath the soil. These bulb-like structures retain a tremendous amount of water. That's why your ZZ plant is able to go for an extended period of time without being watered. Now, if you do water it too much, your roots are susceptible to root rot. This particular ZZ plant did have that particular issue. As you can see, the bulb of the ZZ plant rotted slightly. What I did when this happened was I took it from the soil and I allowed it to dry out a little bit outside of the soil. From there, once it dried out, I placed it back into my original pot with the exact same potting mix, reduced the watering tremendously, and all of a sudden these beautiful roots started to form. You can see the beautiful white roots of this ZZ plant that are connected to the bulbs, which then help to feed the foliage. So again, your ZZ plant does not need to be watered a lot. In fact, it's better to underwater than to overwater this particular plant. To fertilize or not to fertilize? That's an important question when it comes to caring for your ZZ plant. I prefer to feed all of my plants at least with an all-purpose 10-10-10 type fertilizer. Granular is my preference. ZZ plants don't need to be fertilized, however. You might notice that if you don't fertilize, your plants might end up with a tint of yellow or they might not get to the deep, dark green color if you have that particular variety. So again, to fertilize or not to fertilize is up to you, but it won't harm the health of your plant. If you like this type of video and would like to see more videos about houseplant tips and tricks, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and would mean a lot. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. When it comes to humidity and temperature levels, it's important to remember that your ZZ plant is a tropical plant. It's best to keep the humidity levels relatively high as if it were in the tropics, for instance. Keep the relative humidity above 50 for best results of your ZZ plant. If you find that your humidity levels are too low, try using a humidifier. That's the best and easiest way to raise the relative humidity level around your plant. Temperature wise, the ZZ plant likes to be kept at moderate temperatures. It's ideal to keep it in temperatures that are at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year. If it dips below that temperature mark, it's fine. It will be okay, but your ZZ plant won't be its best. If you want absolute best results, keep your plant outside in the summertime where it can get those hot warm temperatures as if it were in the tropics. It's not uncommon for the humidity levels to be higher outside during the spring and summertime than the inside. Let's talk about the soil for a little bit. Be sure to give your ZZ plant well draining soil. The easiest way to tell if your soil is well draining is to pour water at the top of your plant and to see how quickly it takes for the water to percolate down the bottom. If you notice that it takes an extensive amount of time, say 15 to 20 seconds for the water to go from top to bottom, chances are your soil is too compact or chances are that your soil retains too much moisture. 
Try mending your soil with pyrolite to make sure or to help with the soil drain. It's ideal for water to be able to freely flow from the top to the bottom in 10 seconds or less. Propagating your ZZ plant is also fairly easy. The easiest way to propagate your ZZ plant is to divide the bulbs. As you can see, this particular ZZ plant has four distinct bulbs that have formed over time. Here is a bulb, here is a bulb, you have a bulb here, and we also have a bulb back here. If I wanted to propagate this ZZ plant, what I would do is I would lift the root ball out of the pot and I would separate one bulb from the other, ensuring that each bulb still retain a certain amount of root system to allow for the water uptake. That is the easiest and most efficient way to propagate your ZZ plant. And there you have it, everything you need to know in order to successfully grow the beautiful ZZ plant. Make sure that you give your ZZ plant anywhere from bright indirect light all the way to mid-level light. If you decide to give your ZZ plant low levels of light, you're not going to get that beautiful growth that the ZZ plant is capable of, but it can survive it. Also check to make sure that your soil is well draining. It's up to you whether or not you decide to fertilize your plant. However, all plants can benefit at least with some levels of fertilization. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.